All right, so I'm about to talk a bit about section 5.3. In section 5.3, every single problem is a graphing problem. And the shape of every graph is going to be a U that either opens up or downwards. And specifically, the shape we call a parabola. So this might be you know, typical of a graph that we might produce when we do one of the problems in this section. So we're going to graph U's essentially, um, and they're either going to open up or down. They can open left or right, but if they open left or right, they're not functions, and everything we're graph is gonna, going to be a function. So we're only going to graph U's that open down or opened up, and we need to, when we um, produce a graph of a parabola, need to um, identify features of the parabola. Probably the most important pe feature is kind of where, where it, the, it has the, the its top or its bottom. And on this graph that I just randomly drew, that's the point four six. And we call that point the bend in the parabola, the vertex. So the parabola that I just made up here, we'd say has a vertex of the point four six. There are three other features of a parabola that we'll be asked to identify as we get into the section. One thing, one of the features is called the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is a vertical line in this particular for these parabolas that cuts the parabola in half. The axis of symmetry, which I usually abbreviate AOS, will always have the equation. x equal to the x coordinate of the vertex because vertical lines have equations that only have x's and, and don't have y's so for so again so the axis of symmetry i'm going to draw it it's a vertical line that cuts the parabola in half i don't always draw it on my parabola but if i do draw it i usually draw it as a dashed line just to make it stand out a little bit so this line that i just drew is supposed to be the axis of symmetry. It's supposed to cut the parabola into two equal halves. My graph isn't 100% perfect, so it like the left half is a little bit bigger than the right half. If I drew a perfect parabola, then each of the halves would be perfectly the same size. And the equation of the axis of symmetry has to do with the x coordinate of the vertex. And for this particular problem, the axis of symmetry AOS would have an equation x equal to 4. So here's the f for every problem we're going to be asked to identify the vertex and some of the problems will be asked to identify the axis of symmetry some we won't and then when we have a parabola the in our instances the, the vertex will either be at the top or the bottom of the parabola and the third thing we'll need to be I need to be able to state is whether the vertex is, is considered a maximum point or a minimum point. And we say the vertex is a maximum point if it is located at the top of the parabola. And the vertex is called a minimum point if it's located at the bottom of the parabola. And 
And that's all they'll ever be. The vertex for our class will either be at the top or the bottom of the parabola. So anytime I see have a graph of a parabola, it's, it should be easy to state what the vertex is. It's just at it's the it's where the bend occurs. The axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. It's the vertical line that cuts the graph in half. Parabolas won't have both a maximum or and a minimum point. They'll have one or the other. This parabola that I drew, because the vertex is at the top of the parabola, we'd call the vertex a maximum point. So another thing that would be important to identify about this graph is we'd have to say the vertex is a maximum point as opposed to a minimum point. When the vertex is a maximum point, the y value of the vertex is the biggest y value of any point on the graph. So when the vertex is a maximum point, as it is here, the y-coordinate of the vertex, in this case the 6, will be the largest y value of any point on the graph. It turns out that kind of the opposite is true. So for this, for minimum points, for this graph, if I labeled a bunch of points, and I didn't do such a nice job, but like here's maybe the point six two, here's the point mm, one zero. No matter how many points I draw, if I look at their y's, their y's are going to be less than the y coordinate of the vertex because when the when a vertex is a maximum point its y value is the biggest y value of any point on the graph because they have a higher y value than that of the vertex. You take, the point would have to be above it because y's go up, get higher as you go up the x-axis. There's no point higher than that, so it has the highest x value. Kind of, it works the same way for minimum points. Um, when the vertex is a minimum point, the y-coordinate of the vertex will be the smallest y-value of any point on the graph. is everything that we're going to, in our class, need to know about parabolas. There are other things um, that you might get in a, in a higher level class, like something called a focus that you might have even seen in high school, but we're not going to do that. So um, just to read this, a, the vertex is a maximum point if it's located at the top of the parabola. When the vertex is a maximum point, the y-coordinate of the vertex will be the largest y-value of any point on the graph. The vertex is a minimum point if it's located at the bottom of a parabola. When the vertex is a minimum point, the y-coordinate of the vertex will be the smallest y-value of any point on the graph. So for this graph that I just drew, because the vertex is a maximum point, the y-coordinate of the vertex 6 is the maximum y-value. And that might be the last thing I need to say about this. So the maximum y-value of any point on the graph is y equal to 6. 
So that's everything I could possibly say uh, for our class. I mean, there's more things I could say about this graph, but this, these are all the things I'm going to need to say about the graph of a parabola. Let me um, sketch another graph. Keep the coordinates nice and positive. So. Making a more accurate graph this time. So we're going to graph a lot of parabolas. They'll either open up or open down. This particular graph that I drew, I'm going to try to talk about all the four features that I may be asked to find for any parabola. So the graph that I drew here, the vertex is the point where the parabola bends. And so for this particular parabola, the vertex would have the coordinates for positive 2. And then I may or may not be asked to say what the axis of symmetry is. And I may, I usually don't, well, I usually draw it, but you don't have to draw it. So this is a picture of the axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry for any parabola always has the equation x equals, because it's a vertical line, vertical lines have x's in their equations and not y's, and what it has to equal is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So for this particular parabola that I drew, the axis of symmetry would have an equation of x equal to 4, because the axis of symmetry will always have the equation x equals the x-coordinate of the vertex every single graph that we do that's going to be a constant. The vertex, how we classify it, depends on whether it occurs at the top or the bottom of the parabola. In this case, the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, so we call the vertex a minimum point as opposed to a maximum point. And the last problem, or the last example that I drew, the vertex was considered a maximum point because it was at the top of the graph. In this particular problem, the vertex is considered a minimum point because it's at the bottom of the graph. So once you have a graph of a parabola, you can look at it. If the vertex is at the top, we call the vertex a maximum point. If the vertex is at the bottom, we call it a minimum point. So vertex, axis of symmetry, classifying the vertex as a maximum or minimum point are three of the four things that we might be asked for a parabola. The fourth thing is to give me the extreme y value. and when the vertex is a minimum point, the y-coordinate of the vertex will be the smallest y-value. So the minimum or smallest y-value of any point on the graph for this particular graph is going to be 2. So I'm going to say the minimum y-value for any point on the graph is 2. No matter what point I, I look at, if I look at any point other than the vertex and I stare at its y, no matter which point it is, if I look at the y-coordinate of the vertex and then I look at any other point on the graph, when the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, the y-coordinate of the vertex will be the very smallest y-value. So these are the four features that will be asked to identify um, for parabolas. Some of the problems in the section don't ask me to do all four features. Some only ask for the vertex. Some ask for two of the three features, or two of the four features. And it will be clear in the instructions um, which features that I'm looking for. So that's a semi-warm-up enough to get started. The thing about graphing parabolas is... You need to make a, a good tables of x and y's to get a good picture. And if you have a cruddy table of x and y values, you're not going to get a very nice table. So each of the problems, if you look at problems 1 through 12, they're all grouped together because what they have in common is they have 
So numbers 1 12, I only see one x term as opposed to two x terms. Like if I get down to the, the ending problems in the section, if you look at problem 42 or the, the, the latter problems in the section, you'll see two x terms. So immediately I can tell the difference between this problem in 1 through 12 and that problem 42. This only has one x term and it has no parentheses. And very specifically, I guess it has one x squared term because parabolas occur when you have an x squared for your exponent. And so again, so I can differentiate um, problems 1 through 12 from the problems at the end that have two x's real quickly. And I could differentiate them from the, the second and third group of problems because there isn't a parentheses. When that's the case, when you have that set up, when there's no parentheses, there's one x term that has an x squared, this starting table of x's will work perfectly. So for each of the problems between 1 and 12, I'm going to use the table negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for my x's, and then I'm going to find my y's. Um, the, this is given function notation, but I'm using the y notation. I'm thinking of this as y equals x squared plus 2. Anytime I have function notation, I could change it to a y. And the function notation and the y are interchangeable. So I'm now I'm going to get a bunch of uh, y values, and that's going to create points. For the first point, I'm going to go y equals negative 2 squared plus 2. I could do that on my calculator if I can't do it in my head. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. So one of the points I'm going to draw is the point negative 2, positive 6. So that's actually be the first point. I'm going to label it negative 2, positive 6. And then I'm going to plug negative 1 in. I'm going to go y equals negative 1 squared plus 2. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. Positive 1 plus 2 is 3. So that's going to give me the point negative 1, positive 3 for my second point. Then I'm going to go y equals 0 squared plus 2. 0 squared is 0 times 0, which is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2. I'm going to get the point 0, 2. And then y equals 1 squared plus 2. That's 1 plus 2, which is 3. So I'm going to get the point 1, 3. And then the last one, y equals 2 squared plus 2, which is 4 plus 2, which is 6. So 2, 6, best I could. So I found five points. That's generally what I do for a graph of all my parabolas, is I find five points. And if I pick my x's cleverly, then five points will, when you graph them, you'll see the parabola start to form. And I'm just going to draw a parabola through these points the best I can. And at the edges of my parabola, since I'm going, doing this by hand and it's not that hard to do, I'm putting little arrows signifying the graph keeps going. It just doesn't stop. So I've done part of the instructions. I made a table of values. I've sketched the function. And then it, the, the extra for numbers 1 through 12, I'm supposed to identify the vertex. I don't have to say what the axis of symmetry is. I don't have to, to say if the vertex is a maximum or minimum point. So I'm just going to identify the vertex. That's this point here that I even forgot to label. That's the point 0, 2 that I got from right there. So the vertex is the point 0, 2. That's everything I needed to do for problem 2. I'm going to move on to problem 4. And then I'm going to start showing you um, how I could use my calculator to speed up the table creation process. So every problem between 1 and 12, because it only has one x squared term and it doesn't have a parentheses, it doesn't have an x squared and an x to the first power term, it doesn't have a parentheses, my starting table is going to be this negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2 in my x column. So immediately when I go to problem 4, it looks kind of the same, and again, I'm really thinking this is a y as opposed to the h of x, because it just makes it easier for me. 
So every problem between 1 and 12, I'm going to start off with the same table. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for my x's. And then I'm going to find my y's. First y is going to be y equals negative 2 squared minus 3. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Positive 4 minus 3 is positive 1. So the point I'm going to plot is negative 2, positive 1 for my first point. So that's the point, negative 2, positive 1. And then I'm going to take the negative 1, go y equals negative 1 squared minus 3. That's going to be 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So the next point I'm going to plot is the point, negative 1, negative 2. And then I'm going to do y equals 0 squared minus 3, which is 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. Then I'm going to plot the point 0, negative 3. And then y equals to 1 squared minus 3, which is the same as 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So now the point 1, negative 2. And lastly, y equals to 2 squared minus 3, which is 4 minus 3, which is 1. So the point 2, 1. Again, if I pick the five points nicely, I'm going to see that parabola start to form. And there it is here. So I'm going to draw it the best I can. And so in terms of the instructions for 1 through 12, Make a table of values, done. Sketch the function, done. Last thing, identify the vertex. I haven't done that yet, but it takes me two seconds to do that because I can see where the vertex is. So when I graph parabolas, I always try to structure my table so that you see the symmetry. Um, I always pick my x's in such a way that the vertex is in the middle of the table, which you see in both problems up uh, two and four and if you look at the y's you see a duplication above and below the vertex i that's going to happen every time if i've created a nice table i you'll see the y's b above the vertex to be the same as the y's below the vertex okay so the tedious part of doing these graphs are creating the tables it's just not that hard to create a table, um, but it's time consuming and tedious. So I'm gonna show you how to get these tables on your calculator. So if I wanted to produce this table on my calculator because I didn't wanna do all this math, and if when I do all this math, I could make an error, super easy to do on my calculator. So on my calculator to produce the table that I just did here, I'm gonna put my calculator on and hit the mode button, which is right next to the on key. And on my calculator, the option seven says table. This calculator, um, when it gets new batches of it, sometimes it's not the number seven. On most students, you'll see seven that says table. If you don't see table, you're, you're gonna have to um, arrow around to see the feature that says table. Um, if you can't find it, come visit me and I'll, I'll help you find it because it's going to save you a lot of time. But uh, hopefully most of yours, when you hit the mode button, it's just right, just like mine. But for whatever reason, um, calculate this calculator, like my calculator and yours could look identical, but it could be programmed slightly different because it's a little bit newer, a little bit older than mine. So anyways, I after I, the table is number seven on mine, so I type the number seven. And then my calculator flashes an f of x that's the same as the y. What I have to enter is the x squared minus 3. And the x is on the right parentheses key. You can barely see it with my... Um, oh, well, that didn't really help for any. I probably made it worse. Um, there. No, no, no. Anyways, you can't really see it, but... Oh. Believe me, on your calculator on the right parentheses, you'll see an X. It's written in red, so to al activate it, you hit the alpha key. So I'm going to hit the alpha key, and then the right parentheses key. There's my X. I want to square it, so I'm going to hit the X squared key. And then I'm going to go minus 3. 
when I hit equals, my calculator has the x squared minus 3 in. I'm going to need to tell it the x's that I want to write in. So I hit enter. And then where do I want my table to start? Which x do I want my table to start at? I want it to start at negative 2. So I'm going to type the number negative 2 and hit enter. And then it says, where do I want my table to end? Well, I want my table to end at x equal to positive 2, which is there. So I'm going to type 2 for end. And then step, how far are these numbers apart? These are all only one apart. So I'm going to go step 1 and hit enter. And now, if I look at what I have here, I see x equal negative 2, f of x equals 1. That's the point negative 2, 1. I see x equal negative 1 f of x, which is the same as y, equals negative 2. And then I see x equals 0, f of x equals negative 3. And if I scroll down, x equal to 1, y equal to negative 2. And if I scroll down again, in the x column, I see 2. In the y column, I see 1. So um, probably from now on, I'm going to generate all of my tables, the y's, just by using my calculator. Because it's not that hard to do it by hand. It's tedious and it takes more time than I care to spend on finding y's. And it's just basic arithmetic. That's, I don't know, you know, orders of operations kind of math, 082 kind of math, which is, you know, something we don't need to be, you know, spinning our tires, wasting time doing. So I'm going to do six exactly the same way. It's going to have the same beginning table because there's only one x term with an x squared. There's no parentheses. One x squared term, no parentheses. That's exactly this case. My beginning table is going to be that negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. So I'm going to go starting table, x column, negative 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2. Make my y column, which my calculator is going to call f of x, but I can um, call it whatever I want to. I like y better. So I'm now I'm going to go um, mode 7 for table, and then alpha, right parentheses for the x, squared minus 2. So I have the function, and again, I hit the red alpha key and the right parentheses to get the x. Start at negative 2. It's supposed to be positives there. End at positive 2. Step 1. Now look for my y's. Next to negative 2, it's supposed to be positive 2. Next to negative 1, it's supposed to be negative 1. Next to 0, it's going to be negative 2. Next to 1, it's going to be negative 1. And next to 2, it's going to be 2. See, the nice thing about this, I can tell I've got a good table because the duplication of the y's above and below the middle points. So let me plot these five points. So first, negative 2, positive 2. You absolutely don't need to be using graph paper to do this. I just... Um, was easy for me to do and it's free for me but you can sketch a coordinate system yourself and make the you know make a reasonable graph your graphs don't need to be that that accurate that you need to use graph paper so I plot at the five points again if I pick my X column nicely then I can see the parabola and again, I should probably put little arrows at the end of my graphs to signify that it goes on. And the only thing I'm asked to label on this one is the vertex. So up through 12, the problems are super easy. They all have the same X column, and I can get the Ys by just pressing buttons, and I know how to plot points. And I, so it's a nice, nice group of problems. 8, the 2 in front of the x squared is going to make the graph skinnier. So for 8, because it still has only one x squared term, not an x squared and an x to the first power term, no parentheses, my starting table is going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for my x's. And my y's, I'm just going to mindlessly press buttons. So mode 7 for table and then 2, 
alpha right parentheses for the x squared minus 6 start at negative 2 end at positive 2 step 1 first point is going to be negative 2 positive 2 second point is going to be negative 1 negative 4 third point 0 negative 5 fourth point 1 negative 4 last point 2 2 again if you didn't have this calculator you can get all these y's like to get this y right here I'd go 2 times negative 2 squared minus 6 do the exponent first this is going to be 2 times 4 minus 6 which is going to be 8 minus 6 and 8 minus 6 is 2 I have to do that five times and I don't care to do that five times so my calculator would do it for me so let me plot the points negative 2 positive 2 negative 1 negative 4 0 negative 5 1 negative 4 and 2 2 connect the points make my u if you compare this graph to the other graphs the um, this parabola is a little narrower when you have like if, if there was like a 4 in front of that x squared it would even get narrower as opposed to wider if there was a 1 half it would get wider but that's not terribly important for our purposes I'm, I'm, I've made done my table of values I'd sketch my graph the only other thing that this problem asks for is the vertex which is going to be 0 negative 5 everything done for number 8 I'm going to march on to number 10 I might start getting points that aren't going to fit on my coordinate system but I'll deal with that the best I can sometimes I can only plot you know three of my points so there's my starting table for every problem between 1 and 12 because there's only one x squared term as opposed to two x's and there's not a parentheses so I'm going to enter the function mode table negative 4 alpha right parentheses for the x squared plus 9 enter start at negative 2 end at 2 step 1 so I get negative 2 negative 7 negative 1 positive 5 0 9 1 5 and 2 negative 7 so mindlessly now going through these problems so I've created my table I'm gonna plot my points and again you can see I have a nice table because the the Y's are duplicated above the middle point and that's kind of what I all have in every problem that I do correctly so here's the point negative 2 negative 7 the point negative 1 positive 5 the point 0 9 point one five and the point two negative seven the negative four does two things um, the negative makes the parabola go upside down as opposed to right side up and the four makes it even skinnier than the two did so this graph if I do it the best I can it went upside down because of the negative in front of the x squared term and it got super skinny because of the force bigger than two which is bigger than not having anything there so that's everything I need for number 10 I'm gonna do 12 and 12 isn't gonna fit so nice on my coordinate system so I'm gonna have to probably extend my Y's up a little bit And kind of do some of these in my head a little bit so same table negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 I'm gonna pop off my y's pretty quickly here so mode 7 get negative 6 alpha x squared plus 15 start at negative 2 and at positive 2 step 1 so 
So I get negative 2, negative 9, negative 1, positive 9, 0, 15, 1, 9, and 2, negative 9 for my points to plot. I'm going to plot the points now. So negative 2, negative 9, negative 1, positive 9, the 0, 15. I knew that was coming up because I've done enough of these. I can predict where the vertex is going to be at by just looking at the equation. And when you do enough of these, you'll start to maybe develop that skill as well. It's not really impressive. If you do enough of these, you'll definitely start to see the uh, strategy. So this graph goes way up there. The negative in front of the 6x squared makes it go upside down. And the 6 makes it the narrowest graph yet. Graph. And so vertex 0, 15. That's the first style of problem. They're all really nice. They work the same. Because the nice thing about those is they have the same table for all of those 12 problems. The unfortunate thing is that's not always going to be the case. And... 13 through 24, what they have in common is they have that parentheses in a single x. So 13 through 24, what they have in common is I only see a single x as opposed to two x's, and I see a parentheses. For these, I can't use the negative 2, 1, 0, 1, 2 table. What I have to do is I'm going to change the sign of the number inside the parentheses. And put that in the middle of my x column. So I look at problem 14, I see x minus 3 squared. That is the problem that has a single x and a parenthesis, and you need a square to get a parabola. If there was no square, you wouldn't get a parabola. When that's the case, you take the number inside the parentheses, change its sign, put that in the middle of the x column, and then I want my table to have five consecutive numbers. So from that three, if I step left and right twice, my table is going to be one, two, three, four, five as opposed to negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So for each of the problems between 13 and 24, I take the number in the middle, in the parentheses, change its sign. That's going to be my middle x. Now my table here is going to go from 1 to 5. My table is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the reason I start at 1, because from the middle x, I go left 2 and right 2, starting at 1, ending at 5. and I could do these by hand if I wanted to, but I don't need to. So mode, table, parentheses, alpha, x minus 3, close my parentheses, squared, start at 1, end at 5, step always 1. And the table I see, first I see 1 comma 4. Then I see 2 comma 1, then I see 3 comma 0, then I see 4 comma 1, and 5 comma 4. So I can tell I've picked a good table because I have the duplication of the y's above and below the middle point. If you picked a different table, you probably wouldn't see the vertex or you wouldn't see this nice symmetry. Again, I could have gotten any of these points by hand. Like this first point, I could have done 1 minus 3 squared. That would give me negative 2 squared, which is positive 4. The second one, I could have done 2 minus 3 squared equals negative 1 squared equals to 1. And then 3 minus 3 squared equals 0 squared equal to 0. could get all the y's by hand. It's just saving me a lot of work getting the table on my calculator. So I'm going to plot the points. So I have the point 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 0, 4, 1, and 5, 4. OK. 
connect them, make my U. If I pick my points wisely, five points will definitely show a nice parabola. So this one said make a table of values, done. Sketch a graph with a function, done. Haven't identified the vertex yet, but it asked me to do that. So I'm going to say the vertex is the point three zero. And this one wants the axis of symmetry. I'm going to draw it in. I'm going to write its equation down. So the axis of symmetry for any parabola is always has the equation x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. So for this problem, it's going to be x equal to 3. So the only difficulty between 13 and 24 is that the table, my x's aren't the same for every problem. They vary for every problem. So when I go to problem 16, it fits the same mold. It has only one x, doesn't have two x's, but it has that parentheses. So I'm going to take the number in the parentheses, change its sign. I'm going to change the negative 7 to positive 7 and go right a few and left a few. The table that I'm going to put is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 because I changed the sign of the number in the parentheses. Go left a couple, go right a couple. The table I'm going to need is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so every table between uh, the this, this second group of problems is going to change depending on the number in the parentheses. I change its sign, go left a couple, go right a couple. I can see the table that I need, and now I'm going to get my y's. So mode, table, parentheses, alpha, x, minus 7 squared. Start at 5, end at 9, step 1. So I get the point. Five four six one seven zero eight one and nine four. If you didn't have this calculator, then you'd have to do each of the y's by hand, and that's no, I just don't even care to do that. So I'm gonna plot my points now. Five four six one seven zero eight one and 9-4. Connect them best I can. Done with making a table of values and sketching a graph. I was asked for all these problems, I'm asked to say what the vertex is. That's the point seven zero. Now I'm going to do the axis of symmetry. I'm going to abbreviate it AOS and the axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. That's everything I needed for 16. 18, same setup. That's why these problems are all grouped together, because they all have the same setup. They have 1x inside of parentheses. When I have 1x inside of parentheses, I take the number in the table, in the parentheses, change its sign. I change positive 5 to negative 5. From negative 5 on the x-axis, I go left a couple and right a couple. The table I'm going to need here is negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. Or don't need the negative 2. So again, 1x inside a parentheses with a square. I take the number inside the parentheses, change its sign, go left a couple, go right a couple. There's the x's that I need. I'm going to make my table now. Mode 7, parentheses, x plus 5 squared, start at negative 7, end at negative 3, step 1, so I get the point negative 7, 4, negative 6, 1, negative 5, 0. You start to see some connections between the tables because there isn't a number in front of the parentheses. You start to get a lot of duplication of the y's. So now I'm going to plot the graph negative 7, positive 4, negative 6, positive 1, negative 5, comma, 0, negative 4, comma, 1, and negative 3, comma, 4. Connect the points the best I can with a nice U. Arrows to tell me it goes on say what the vertex is. It's the point negative 5 comma 0. 
draw a nice picture of the axis of symmetry. You don't need to draw it, but it's okay. The axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. So it's x equal negative 5. It's everything for that problem done reasonably quickly. The 4 in front of that parentheses doesn't impact my table um, in terms of the x's. So I take the number in the middle and the in the parentheses change its sign that's positive 1. Go right a couple, left a couple. So I need to go negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 for my table. So again, I take the number inside the parentheses, change its sign, go left 2, go right 2. That shows my table needs to be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3 for my x's. Now I'm going to sketch my graph. Mode 7, 4, parentheses, x, minus 1, quantity squared. Start at negative 1, end at positive 3, step 1. Oh, I can't graph that point. Negative 1, comma, 16, 0, comma, 4, 1, comma, 0, 2, comma, 4, 3 comma 16. So even though my table has five points, I don't have room to graph the 16s. I can kind of maybe fudge them in, but um, I, it's okay just to graph three points. If I graph the point 0, 4, 1, 0, and 2, 4, I know that the next point needs to be up here somewhere for the point 3, 16. I need a point way up here somewhere for negative 1, 16. If I didn't plot those points, it's not a deal breaker. I can still, even with three points, get a reasonable graph. But I, so it's okay if if the if the y values get so big that you don't care to draw those y values. That's okay. Notice I didn't even take the time to write the coordinates of the points. That's also okay. You can just make dots and not label. I can see the points down here just fine. I always construct my tables, so smack dab in, in the middle of the, the table, you see the vertex. And this vertex is the point one zero. The axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal x coordinate of the vertex, so it's going to be x equal to 1. You could even see that I drew those 16s up there, but I drew those. The fraction's going to make it a nuisance. Um, because I'm going to have to plot some fractions. But it's not going to be that hard because my calculator will, will rock it for me. I'm going to get the same t starting table for this problem as the last problem because it has the same number in the parentheses. Since they both had minus 1 in the parentheses, I changed the minus 1 to positive 1, found that on the x-axis, went left and right a couple. So my table is going to be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. The fact that there's a negative, it's going to make the, it go upside down. The fact that there's a one-third, it's going to be a really wide parabola. So mode 7 fraction negative 1 over 3 parentheses x minus 1 squared. I really wouldn't want to do this table without a, a calculator. It'd be a nuisance to deal with the fractions. Start at negative 1, end at positive 3, step 1, and it gives me decimals. It's actually easier for me to graph decimals, so I kind of like that. So negative 1, negative 1 1.33, 0, negative, negative 0 0.33. I could put a little bar over it because it's repeating. 1, 0. 2, negative 0 0.33 repeating, and 3, negative 1.33 repeating. Those are barely readable, but hopefully you got the same thing in front of you. So first point, negative 1, negative 1 1.33. So I go left 1, and then down 1.33. That's about just, it's underneath the, ne it's underneath the negative 1, not quite down to the negative 2. 0, negative 0 0.33, I go 0 on the x-axis and then down one-third of the way between 0 and negative 1. So it's pretty close to the origin, just a little bit under the origin. And then 1, 0. 
and then 2 negative 0.33 is going to be at the same level as that point but over at 2 and then 3 negative 1.33 is going to be at the same level as that point just down at the 3 so I'm going to graph these and the negative one-third the negative flips it over and the one-third makes it really wide so I don't think um, I've ever made students graph um, fractions or decimals on the test so it's not something I'm really that worried about not the best graph even with graph paper one zero is the vertex the axis of symmetry, I haven't drawn it in, but it's always x equal the x coordinate. I did draw it in. It's x equal x coordinate of the vertex. Ugh. Another fraction. 24. Parentheses again. Change the number, the sign of the number in the parentheses from positive 2 to negative 2. So my table is going to start at negative 4 end at 0 so it's going to be negative 4 negative 3 negative 2 negative 1 0 go for my y's mode 7 f of x I'm going to go fraction 1 over 4 parentheses alpha x plus 2 squared start at negative 4 end at 0 step 1 I get oh, better numbers I get 1, 0 0.25, which is a quarter, 0, 0 0.25, and 1. Very nice. Those are much easier for me to plot. So negative 4, positive 1, negative 3, and then positive 1 quarter, almost just right above the um, x-axis, negative 2, 0, negative 1, and then a quarter, and then zero and one. So the best I could, I've labeled, I've drawn the points, and again, when you have fractions in front of the parentheses, you get a really wide parabola. Still gonna be the case that the vertex is the number in the middle of the table. So it's gonna be the point negative two, zero and the axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, that's the second group of problems completely done. The third group of problems didn't really need to be separated so much from the second group of problems. They're slightly more complex because there's maybe a number after the, the um, parentheses, but if you only have one x and it's inside of parentheses, then the starting table you get by changing the sign of the number in the parentheses, finding that on the x-axis, and going left and right a couple. So the x columns are going to be um, the same structure. When I see just a single x inside of parentheses, I do that every time for my x's. So my x's here are going to be 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 because I take the number inside the parentheses, changed its sign, found it on the x-axis, want to left a couple and right a couple. Now I'm going to make my table and talk about more of the features. So mode 7, x minus 2 squared plus 6, enter, start at 0, end at 4, step 1, I get 0, 10, one seven two oh it looks like five looks like six actually my eyes are failing me there three seven and four ten again i can see that nice symmetry there between the uh, y's and that's good plot my points zero ten i'm just going to say it's about here so here's the point zero ten the best i could one seven 2, 6, 3, 7, and the best I can, 4, 10. So I can see the parabola. So I've done the beginning. I've made a table of values. I've sketched a graph. I'm going to do the vertex and the axis of symmetry. Those are easy. I've been doing those. 
the vertex for this is the 0.26. The axis of symmetry is x equal to 2. And now I have to state whether the vertex is a maximum or minimum point. And in this problem, because the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, the vertex is a minimum point. So that stuff that I said at the beginning, the vertex is located at the bottom of the parabola. We call the vertex the minimum point. So I've done vertex, axis of symmetry, made a table value, sketched the function. In this problem, I'm going to say the vertex is a minimum point. So I've done that part. And then I want to state the minute maximum or minimum value. If you look at my table, the, the y coordinate of the vertex 6 is the smallest y coordinate. And no matter how many points I put in my table, that y value of the vertex is always going to be the smallest y value. So I'm going to say the minimum y value is y equal to 6. Now I've answered everything. Table of values, kind of the same as the last group of problems, sketching a graph, just plotting and connecting them with a U. Vertex, always in the middle of my table. Axis of symmetry, always x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. If the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, we call it a minimum point. If the vertex is at the top of the parabola, we call it the maximum point. If the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, the y coordinate of the vertex is the smallest y value for any point on the graph, so the minimum y value is y equal to 6. 26, or really, 28. Did I skip a problem? I don't know. That was 26, so I didn't skip a problem. So 28, beginning table. I look at the number inside the parentheses, change its sign to negative 1. So positive goes to negative 1, so I go negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 0, and 1. So my table is going to be starting at negative 3. Then it goes negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. And one, so it goes from negative three to positive one. Let me get my table. Start at negative three, end at positive one. Step one, so negative three, positive fourteen. I can't fit that on my graph. I might not even graph that. Negative two, positive five. Negative 1, positive 2, 0, positive 5, 1, positive 14. So I just use my calculator's ability to get the y's because I can get the y's by hand. It's just a nuisance to do by hand. It's just saving me some space, uh, some room, and some work. I'm only going to graph three points, and that's enough. Five is preferred for a parabola, but three is kind of the minimum. So I'm graphing the point negative 2, 5, negative 1, 2, and 0, 5. And I'd like to graph negative 3, 14, and positive 1, 14, but they're off my graph, and I'm not that concerned. My graph doesn't have to be in insanely accurate. So if I just draw my parabola through the three points, that's good enough. I'm not looking for the ultimate best graph in the world. It just has to be reasonably okay. So I've made a table of values, sketched a graph. The vertex is going to be the point negative 1, positive 2. The axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. The next two things are the new things. Because this vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, we're going to say the vertex is a minimum point. If the vertex was at the top of the parabola, if the parabola opened down, we'd say the vertex was a maximum point. But since the vertex is at the bottom, it's a minimum point. And when the vertex is a minimum point, the minimum y value of any point is the y coordinate of the vertex. That's all four things that I needed to ask, uh, talk about the graph or the table for this parabola. So vertex and axis of symmetry, not new. Vertex, if it's at the bottom of the parabola, it's a minimum point. And then the y coordinate of the vertex is the minimum y value. If it is a minimum point. Ugh. Really not looking forward to number 30, but I'm going to deal with it. 
change the sign of the number in the parentheses from positive to negative 3, start at negative 5, end at negative 1 for my table. So again, 1x inside of parentheses, change the sign, go left 2, right 2, you got your table. Now I'm going to enter this, mode 7, fraction 1 third times parentheses, x plus 3 squared minus 1, start at negative 5, end at negative 1, step 1 always, and then horrible decimals, negative 5.33, 0 0.33, negative 4, negative 0 0.66, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 0 0.66, negative 1, 0 0.33. These are not pleasant to graph, but I can do them if I have to. So first point, negative 5.33, so that's a positive point, so I go up, it's less than 1. So I go to negative 5, and I go up just a little bit above the x-axis to get 0.33. At negative 4, the y-coordinate is negative, so I have to go down, but it's less than 1. I go down just a little more than halfway between um, the 0 and the negative 1. And then negative 3, negative 1. And then negative 2 goes down the same as the, the point negative 4, and then negative 1 is positive, it goes up the same as the negative 5x. So I connect these, and anytime again you have fractions in front of the parentheses, you get wide graphs. So that's a, a reasonable graph. I always set my table up so the vertex is that's in the center. So the vertex is the point negative 3, negative 1, the axis of symmetry is x equal to negative 3. This vertex, because it's at the bottom of the parabola, is a minimum point as opposed to a maximum point. And the minimum y value is y equal to negative 1 always. If the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, it's a minimum point and the y coordinate of the vertex that would be the extreme or the minimum y value. You need to do some maximum points. I'm, oh, I better do 32 because it's one of these things that's not like the other. I snuck this in here because on the test, I'm going to do the same sort of thing. I'm going to scramble the, the problems. And so you're going to have to know how to kick out your starting table. And this is in this group with all the parentheses, so I feel like I should should use the parentheses strategy, but there isn't. This problem doesn't have a parentheses, so I'm not going to change the sign of the number in the parentheses. What it has is just like numbers 1 through 12. It has 1x squared term, no parentheses. This one, I just snuck in here because I didn't want you to forget that when you have that set up, when you only have a single x squared term, not two x terms like the bottom group of problems and no parentheses, that's the table that's used for every one of those. So this table is going to give me nice y's. So let me do this real quickly. Mode 7, 3x squared plus 6, start at negative 2, end at 2, step 1. And I'm not going to plot all these points. I see negative 2, positive 18, negative 1, 9, 0, 6, 1, 9, and then 18 again. I think that's 18. Yeah. So I can tell I have a good table because I have duplication of the y's. But if I don't get duplication of the y's, then I haven't started off with a very nice table. I'm just going to plot three of the points again because that's all I really have room for. So I'm plotting the 0, 6, and the positive 1, 9, and the negative 1, 9. The other points I'd like to plot, but can't so well. So that's a reasonable graph. The vertex is always located in the center of my table every time. The axis of symmetry always has the equation x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. For the last four problems, or this in the last three, the vertex has been at the bottom of the parabola. And anytime that's the case, the vertex is a minimum point. 
and the y value of the vertex is the minimum y value. The next problem, the vertex is going to be a maximum point. Because you'll have a negative in front of the parentheses or a negative in front of the x squared. So lots of threes in this problem. The beginning three, the minus three inside the parentheses is going to help me figure out my table. I change the sign of that minus three to positive three, go left a couple, go right a couple. So the table I'm going to use is one, two, three, four, five. So I get my y's. Mode, table, negative three times x minus three squared minus three. Start at one, end at five, step one. More points that I can't graph so well. One, negative 15, two, negative six, three, negative three, four, negative six, five, negative 15. Again, I'm only going to graph the middle three points because those negative 15s are going off of my screen, and it's OK to graph only three points. So I'm going to plot the point. 2, negative 6, 3, negative 3, and 4, negative 6 for only three points. And it's starting to look like a V. should try to really not make a point. Try to make a U as opposed to a V when you do your parabolas. Again, vertex is always going to be in my middle of my table. The axis of symmetry is always x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. In this case, the vertex is a maximum point because it's at the top of the parabola. So for this problem, it would be wrong to say the vertex is a minimum point because it's not at the bottom of the parabola. And when the vertex is a maximum point, the y coordinate of the vertex is the biggest y value. Negative 3 is not a very large number, but it's bigger than any of the other numbers that I see in the y column. So I'm going to say the maximum y value is y equal negative 3. So for the vertex always in the middle of the table, axis of symmetry is always x equals the x coordinate of the vertex. The vertex is at the top of the parabola, it's a maximum point. If the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, it's a minimum point. If the vertex is at the top of the parabola, the y coordinate of the vertex is the maximum y value. If the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, the y coordinate of the vertex is the minimum y value. All right, one more, and then we get a new bank of problems and a whole new world of difficulty in terms of getting the starting table. So, starting table, take the positive one, change it to negative one, go left a couple, go right a couple. My table is going to be negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, and one. Again, one x inside of parentheses. Change the sign of that number. Put it on the x-axis. Go left a couple, go right a couple. So now my table, mode, table, negative two times x plus 1 squared plus 5, start at negative 3, end at 1, step 1, good. Negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, 3, negative 1, positive 5, 0, 3, 1, negative 3. So I have my 5 points and I can graph them all. So negative 3, negative 3. Whoops, I, I, neg, this should be positive 3 here next to the negative 2, I think. I just wrote that wrong. Yeah, it's negative 2, positive 3. That negative I scrubbed out because it should be positive 3. And then negative 2, positive 3, negative 1, positive 5, 0, 3, 1, negative 3. Looks like a reasonable parabola. The vertex is always going to be located in the middle of my table. So here the vertex is the point negative 1, 5. The axis of symmetry is x equal to negative 1. 
the vertex is a maximum point because it's at the top of the graph. And the maximum y value will be the y coordinate of the vertex. There won't be any point on this graph that has a y coordinate bigger than 5, so the maximum y value is y equal to 5. So the middle two banks of problems all had a single x for the most part with a parentheses, and they're still not bad tables to get. The last group of problems, 37 through 48, what these have in common is they have two x's as opposed to one, and I can't just look at the um, problem to know that I do negative two, negative one, zero, one, two table, or I change the sign of a number, and it helps me get my bearings. For these problems, I have to do a kind of a part of the quadratic formula. I'm going to use negative b over 2a and find out what that equals. That's going to be the number that goes in the middle of my x column. So when we have both an x squared and an x, and this is the first problem that to the right of the equal sign we've had two x's. If you look at any of the other problems that we've done, I had one x inside a parentheses or a um, you know, one x, one x inside a parentheses with a lot of them. But we had some of them with just a single x term. When you have two x's, you have to pluck off um, some of the numbers from the problem. In this problem here, the number in front of the x squared is implied one. The number in front of the x term is a ten, and that's the b. So I'm going to go negative ten over two times one, which is negative ten over 2, which is negative 5. This is going to be my anchor. So I'm going to find that number on the x-axis, go left 2 and right 2. So I'm going to go negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3. So when there's two x's, you have to use this part of the quadratic formula, negative b over 2a, to figure out where you're starting and what your table's going to be. So I found negative 5 on the x-axis, went left a couple and right a couple. You'll be able to tell that my table is good because you see the duplication in the y's. So now the rest is the same. Mode, table, x squared plus 10, x minus 11. Start at negative 7, end at negative 3. Three, step one. Ooh, I'm going to have to produce a completely new graph because I'm not going to fit any of these points. Negative 7, negative 32. Negative 6, negative 35. Oh, thank you. It tells me negative. Negative 5, negative 36. Negative 4, negative 35 negative 4, negative 32. So this is a cruddy beginning problem. It doesn't look that bad when you look at it. But I can tell that I've done okay in terms of picking out my um, picking out my table because look at the top y's and the bottom y's are duplicated and I'm going to get a vertex in the center. So when I go to graph these points, I'm going to just bring out a whole new graph and I'm going to do okay. I'm going to label the x-axis by 1, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7. But if I went by 1 on the y-axis, I'd never get there. I'm going to go by 5. I'm going to go negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, negative 25, negative 30, negative 35, negative 40. So it's not desirable, but it's okay to increment your y-axis different than your x-axis. Now I can plot these points. Negative 7, negative 32, the best I can. Now I'm going to really start biting. That's about there. And then negative 6, negative 35 is about here. Negative 5, negative 36 is the lowest point. And then negative 4, negative 35, maybe about there. And then 
negative three. Uh, they're really horribly graphed. When I don't have graph paper, my graphs really get horrible. So it looks like a wide parabola. In general, it wouldn't be that wide. It's just because I have this distorted um, y-axis that I get a you know, kind of a cruddier looking graph. The only point that's really important is the vertex of negative 5, negative 36. Again, I'm going to always make the um, middle of my x column have the vertex. So for this problem, the vertex is the point negative 5, negative 36. The axis of symmetry is x equal to negative 5. The vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, so it's a minimum point. And because the vertex is a minimum point, the minimum y value, and this is nothing new now, is the y coordinate of the vertex. So the rest of the questions, once you get the graph, are, are going to be the same. The vertex is going to be in the middle of my table. The x coordinate of the vertex is the equation of the axis of symmetry. The vertex is at the bottom of the parabola. It's a minimum point, And the y coordinate of the vertex is the minimum y value. The important thing is just be able to get started on these. So again, 40 has two x's. I'm going to use the negative b over 2a formula to help me get started. The a is the number in front of the x squared, which is a 1. The b is the number in front of the x to the first power, which is negative 2. To do negative b over 2a, I get a negative from the formula, and then a negative 2 for the b, and then 2a is going to be 2 times 1. So when we have two x's, I have to use a formula to get me started. And in the numerator here, I have a double negative that goes positive. In the denominator, 2 times 1 is 2. So I get 2 over 2, which is 1. So I'm going to graph starting at 1, going left 2 and right 2. So what I'm going to graph, I'm going to start at negative 1 and end at 3 for my table with 1 smack dab in the middle. So my table is going to be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. The number in the middle of my x column I had to be 1. When there's 2x's as opposed to 1x, I can't just look at the problem and know the numbers from my table. I have to use the formula to help me get anchored on my table. So now I'm going to get my y's, and these y's hopefully aren't that bad. So, mode 7 x squared minus 2x plus 6. Start at negative 1, end at 3, step 1. So I get negative 1, positive 9, 0, 6, 1, 5, 2, 6, and 3, 9. So I can tell that I am going to have a successful graph and I have a nice starting table specifically because when I look at my y's I see that beautiful duplication between the top and the bottom y's. If you don't have the right starting table you won't see this nice symmetry in the table. So I'm just going to plot the points. Negative 1, positive 9, 0, 6, 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 9. Make my u. So I've made a table of values and sketched a graph. The vertex is always in the, my middle of my table. The vertex is 1, 5. The axis of symmetry is always x equal the x coordinate of the vertex. Because this vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, it's a minimum point as opposed to a maximum point. And because the vertex is a minimum point, the y coordinate of the vertex is the smallest y value of any point or the minimum y value of any point. You can see that in my table, 5 is the smallest number. Okay, some of these problems, I might have a fraction for my vertex, and I'm going to skip over those, so I'm kind of fading on you, and on the test, I'll never make a vertex have a fraction. And that's going to be the case in 42. Let me... Um, Instead of doing the real problem 42, let me change this to h of x 
equals to negative 2x squared plus 24x plus 6. And I'll change this. So when you print it out, you won't see that problem that I had. I like this a little bit better because it's not going to have a fraction. So 2x's. When I have 2x's, I have to use the formula negative b over 2a. In this problem, the a is negative 2, the b is 24. So negative b over 2a is going to be negative 24 over 2 times negative 2. That's going to be negative 24 over negative 4. It comes out to be a positive 6. So just like the last two problems, this reincarnation of problem 42 has two x's. I have to use a formula to help me get started with my table. So I found 6 on the x-axis, went left a couple, right a couple. The table I'm going to use for this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Had 6 in the middle, went left and right a couple. Now I'm going to do this problem. Mode 7, negative 2x squared plus 24x plus 6. Start at 4. Four, end at 8, step 1. Ugh, and then I, I'm going to pull out new graph paper for this too. So I see 70, 75, 78, 75, 7, it's at 76. I can't, my eyes are old, so I start doing bad things in terms of reading numbers that are a little bit off. So those are the points that I'm supposed to have, and those aren't going to fit on my graph. I'm going to recalibrate the y-axis and increment it by 10. So I can do it right on this graph. I'm going to redo my y-axis. I'm going to call this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. So 4, 70 can be there. 5 comma 76 can be up a little bit higher than that. 6 comma 78 is even a little bit higher, but still under the 80. 7 comma 76 may be about there. 8 comma 70 about here. And again, when I, when I um, increment the y-axis differently than the x-axis, I kind of get a, a, a distorted parabola. It's way wider than it probably should be, but I didn't, you know, I. I have to live with that, and that's just something I'll deal with. So, reasonable graph, not the best graph, but good enough for these horrible y values. The vertex is the point, 678, the axis of symmetry, x coordinate of the vertex. Because the vertex, this point, 678 is at the top of the graph, it's a maximum point. And the maximum y value is going to be the y coordinate of the vertex. I think I'm just going to do one more problem. I'm, I got to imagine you're getting tired of doing these. That's another one with a fraction vertex. So I'm going to skip oh, the fraction vertex, fraction vertex, fraction. Ugh. Let me change 48. And I might have to go through 44 to make this x squared minus 4x minus 2. Just because I don't want to have fraction vertexes. So I'm going to change 44 to that. And I'll dig through your homework. If I have fraction vertexes, I'll take some of those out because you're not going to be responsible for those. What I have here is another problem with two x's. The a is the number in front of the x squared. The b is the number in front of the x negative b over 2a is going to be negative negative 4 over 2 times 1, which is positive 4 over 2, which is 2. So on my x-axis, I found 2, went left a couple, right a couple. For this version of the problem, I'm going to use the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 table. And for the new creation here, I'm going to go alpha x squared minus 4 alpha x minus 2 
start at 0, end at 4, step 1, nice y's, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 5, 2, negative 6, 3, negative 5, 4, negative 2. So again, I can tell my table is good because I have duplication in my y's. I'm just going to plot these points, 0, negative 2, 1, negative 5, 2, negative 6, 3, negative 5, 4, negative 2, a nice, nice table. Get my graph, vertex, the point 2, negative 6, axis of symmetry, x equal to 2. Because the vertex is at the bottom of the parabola, it's a minimum point as opposed to a maximum point. And the minimum y value is y equal to negative 6. I'm going to um, make sure in your homework that there are very minimal um, vertexes that are fractions. Um, if, For instance, if I was doing problem 46, which I'm not going to do, but what I mean, what, what's going to happen here, if I went A equal to 2, B equal to 7, if I do negative B over 2A, I'd get negative 7 over 2 times 2, which is negative 7 over 4. I'm not going to make it so the x chord, the number that you're looking for in the middle of your x column is a fraction. So um, if that happens when you're doing the bottom group of problems, when you do the negative b over 2a, if you get a fraction, just skip that problem. Um, again, I'll try to clean up some of these so that you're not going to run into too, too many fractions or problems to skip. All right, I'm ready to be done.